So let's get into, I think w- with this Andy Weidel discussion, Adam, we kind of have to break it up into what's happened. We have to explain, you know, the situation of him going to Pittsburgh, um, why, and then where that leaves the Eagles and w- what their direction is going to uh, in, in the first place. So um, so let's start by, by this set way. I think most of our listeners, anybody who's been listening to Inside the Birds for at least two weeks, um, were not surprised when the Steelers named Omar Khan their general manager. In fact, I think in our last podcast, we did a pretty good job of laying out what we thought was going to happen based on what we heard, which was Omar Khan likely to get the job. He is a guy who came up not through the traditional scouting sector. He's going to need a real solid personnel guy. Andy Weidel interviewed for the GM job, but if he didn't get it, he would make sense to be the personnel guy. And we were hearing, you know, that he had a good, a really good interview with Mike Tomlin. So lo and behold, Omar Khan gets the job. Andy Weidel gets the assistant GM job. So it's a great opportunity for Andy. He's from Pittsburgh. Um, so he's working for the organization where he first got started. Um, it's good that he hit it off with Mike Tomlin. So there's a connection there because as we detailed, Mike Tomlin isn't just the head coach. He has a huge influence now in the front office and the personnel going on there. Um, and it's also good, and I think we touched on this a little bit in the last podcast, but we have more intel that that Andy is going to work with Omar Khan. They know each other going back to the early 2000s because they both got their start in the Saints front office. So the Steelers are, are an organization. If you've listened to our show throughout the years, we've told you that they value two things, right? And these two things are satisfied. One, they value promoting from within, grooming, and matric- you know getting guys up through their system. Omar Khan's been there for almost 20 years. So that is a guy that they have been grooming for a long time. And two... They value Pittsburgh ties more so than any franchise I know valuing being where you're from. Andy Weidel's from Pittsburgh. Kevin Colbert, their departing GM, is from Pittsburgh. Brandon Hunt, who we've talked about before, is from Pittsburgh. Doug Whaley worked there. He's from Pittsburgh. It's, it's really a unique thing about how much they value the understanding of working for that franchise and what that city is all about. And so really, they, they, they tied it together. They got a Pittsburgh guy with Andy Weidel, and they got a guy they've been grooming who's been in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh for a long time now in Omar Khan. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it, it, it just makes a lot of sense. You know, the thing that you pointed out about New Orleans, I didn't know that when we did our show Monday morning. We, we, what we it, Folks, if you haven't heard it, we said that there's definitely a possibility that Waddle's going to be his right-hand man uh, because he knows the building. And I, But I didn't know about the New Orleans stuff. That's interesting. That they, they've known each other for 20 years. And we'd said that they knew each other, but I didn't know it like that, as you pointed out. So that, that probably has a lot to do with it, other mm-hmm. than and he knows the organization. He's highly qualified. We'll get into a minute about what this means for the, the Eagles scouting staff because this is obviously pretty major. And good luck to Andy. That's uh, you know, he's hometown team and all that. But it does leave a void. There's no question about it because the thing, and we we have not talked about this on the last show, but we could talk certainly should mention it now. He's the one that sets the board, the draft board, and mm-hmm. obviously hot, heavily influences uh, free agency in terms of his grading and all that stuff. So. But the big one is on the college side and their, and their, their scouting staff, which started the year with 20 people. We'll get into what it looks like now. Uh, so to me, it's big. He sets that, he sets the draft board and they don't, they remember they lost both directors, both mm-hmm. personnel directors uh, a couple months ago. So think about it. Their top three guys under Roseman all left for assistant GM jobs. Yes. And you could say top four. If you consider Catherine Rach going from her position, which was, I believe, Director of Football Administration? Uh, Operation. Uh, right. Right, right. Director of Football Operations to go to the Cleveland Browns. And there were others. We talked about some of the scouts who were fired. We talked about some of the people who, like Tom Dono, by the way, maybe not considered top four as far as day-to-day responsibility. But the impact that he had on Andy Weidel, who he's known since his, both of them were in Pittsburgh, uh, to... People who underneath Andy Weidel on the Eagles personnel staff, we were told that Tom Dono was a very respected, very influential person for not just Howie, but for Andy and for a lot of the scouts. So he's gone, and he might he, listen. We were both told this. He, it doesn't mean he's retired. He's stepping away from the Eagles. His contract, I believe, was up. Um, we'll see if he resurfaces somewhere. But that's another big loss. And so, Adam, I have a, <laughs> I have a, I have a phrase that you always remind me of that I bring up, and that's 
you know, no no franchise hires or fires coaches, position coaches especially, assistant coaches after making the playoffs more than the Philadelphia Eagles, right? So now I may have to amend this and say no franchise not only fires more position coaches after making the playoffs than the Eagles, but also reshuffles its entire front office 